Katie. Hey, Julia. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm just hanging out at the farm. Well, wait a second. You're like a philosopher of science. What are you doing at a farm? Well, so like you and I both work for land grant universities. And so in a way, our jobs exist because people wanted to apply scientific principles to farm work. So it kind of makes sense that we're philosophers of science out at the farm. Wait, wait what? <laughs> Yeah, so like a lot of public universities in the United States were founded um, to help teach people how to do farm work better. That's why a lot of our public universities have whole colleges devoted to agricultural science. And, you know, it's why it's an important part of public education in the United States. And so like I've been here at the farm thinking that it's kind of strange that philosophers of science haven't really looked into agricultural science yet, since it's such an important part of my university and yours too. Um, and I kind of have a suspicion that it's an important part of science. Well, what do you mean? Well, so I was, I was following around some plant pathologists last summer and watching the way that they set up experiments. And one of the big things that they were working on was this thing called grower standard. And I had them explain it to me. And grower standards are the ways that people grow things if they're doing commercial agriculture. So you know, it's everything from how far apart you're gonna set your, your plants in a row to what kind of fungicide protocols you're using to what kind of material and equipment you're gonna be managing as you're, uh, as you're helping the plants grow, as you're cultivating the experiment. And it's such an important part of the way that people run their agricultural experiments. And it's really something that, you know, as a philosopher of science, I'm sitting here thinking that doesn't, kind of line up with any of the pieces of experiment that we've identified in our work so far. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking there might be other things like that in agricultural science that, you know, we philosophers of science should get a better handle on. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm talking too much. What's going on with you? What are you up to? Well, funnily enough, I'm also at a farm. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. Almost like we planned it. Oh my gosh. It's, I'm, as if, right? Um, what are you doing at a farm? Well, you know, I've been exploring like the role extension work, you know, extension work um, that like farmers and like uh, agricultural specialists at universities like University of Kentucky and Michigan State University, um, how that role plays like a role in shaping agricultural science and knowledge kind of co-production. Well, what do you mean by knowledge co-production? Well, you know, I've been thinking about like the the sort of attention that we've all been having to philosophy of science and practice and bioengineering. And it's kind of weird. I mean, like what you were saying, it's kind of weird that like no one seems to be really interested in the sort of applied science of agriculture that like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and until now, you know, um, and so uh, it's, uh, it's kind of like, I mean, this is so cool that you're doing it and I'm thinking about it. And like, there's this like formalized system that's um, of communication practices between um, agricultural sciences and also between research, you know, universities. Um, and this is kind of like, uh, and regulators as well, you know. Totally. Uh, and it's like, there is this agricultural resource. <laughs> You've got friends. <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like talking about agriculture and talking about research technology at these land grant universities. And this is going been on since like the Hatch Act in like 1887. Yeah, um, it's been around for like over a hundred years, you know, yeah. longer than atomic theory. And we still haven't taken care of it. Yeah, it's, it, yeah. it's, it's so weird. It's like, you know, it seems like the kind of thing that philosophy of science should be interested in, but just hasn't. Um, and especially like we're saying that we're interested in philosophy of science and practice, but yet we're not actually being inclusive of agricultural practices. Um, totally. I, so you've, you've been talking to plant pathologists. I've been talking to weed folks, right? Weed folks yeah. and some soil scientists and like, there's all these classifications 
of soil and you know either in terms of like um the what the local farmers talk about and also um what like the the, the soil maps for the actual farm as well as um thinking about when to add um fertilizer when to add um chemicals for um you know to you know pesticides um, that grower standard stuff all over again and it's like it's so cool because it's not just this sort of uh laid on knowledge that comes from just the regulator or just the agriculture departments but actually like from farmers and as co-producers of this kind of knowledge yeah, from it's, the field right i know and it's like you and i have been working on like stuff related to like natural kinds and especially like categories of knowledge and it's like these are like new kind of epistemic kind of categories of yeah. natural science i think so too i think we should probably talk about this more yeah for sure we should totally talk about it do you think that september 4th would do you yeah i'm free let's do it okay I mean, I have heard that there is a, bio, a biological engineering collaboratory, so we could totally talk then. Oh, yeah, let's talk then. Sounds great.